The contract Pep Guardiola signed with Man City bears the date October 10th, 2015. The salary and bonus payments, as one might expect, were absolutely world class. In his first season, he was to earn £13.5 million, which would then go on to rise to £16.75 million the following year. While the terms themselves were nothing out of the ordinary for one of the best coaches in the history of the game, it was the timing that raised eyebrows for journalists in the know. He put pen to paper just two months into a new season in charge of Bayern Munich. Neither Man City nor Pep himself said anything publicly about it at the time, because the latter was simultaneously being paid by two different clubs. Clubs, which, needless to say, was and remains illegal. As it turns out, a journalist with the Sunday Mirror decided to leak this news, and he felt the full wrath of Abu Dhabi's power shortly after. The city's owners control its everything, and they've managed to control the narrative in Britain through a combination of success on the pitch alongside professional PR work off it. You may have noticed how many in the UK, a country that prides itself in being the home of modern day rule of law and democracy, have nothing but good things to say about top UAE officials who oversee a nation with death penalties imposed for adultery and couples can be sent to prison for kissing in public. I'm not just talking about mainstream media outlets like Sky Sports either. Pep Guardiola for instance is a man who never stands still. On the sidelines, he paces up and down like a fucking lunatic while sipping into his water bottle like he hasn't had anything to drink in days whenever City can see the goal. He's no different in press conferences or interviews either. At showcase by his patronizing and sarcastic digs at anyone who so much as questioned one of his tactical decisions. However, whenever he meets Sheikh Mansour, his body language does a full 180. This is because he knows that Man City are nothing more than a soft power strategy of the ruling family of the UAE, whose influence knows no bounds. Under Mohammed bin Zayed, who happens to be Sheikh Mansour's brother, the UAE has become a brutal torturing police state at home and a perpetrator of war crimes abroad. In fact, Human Rights Watch went as far as to state that there isn't a single human rights activist in the country anymore, as those who dare to speak out against the royal family are immediately arrested. When this is the sort of force you're dealing with, it's no surprise that everyone goes into hiding. A big reason why almost no western media outlet is reported on the fuckery that went on with Pep Guardiola's contract is because of a man named Simon Pearce. He's an Australian national who has long been part of City's leadership group. While he's virtually unknown to the public, the guy's responsible for Khaldun al Mubarak's entire PR work, ranging from how he conducts himself in interviews, the way his firms are seen across the board, and how his club Man City are perceived around the globe. Prior to joining City, Pearce worked for Burson Marstler, a PR agency that specializes in discrete problem solving and image control for extremely influential clients. For years, a sarcastic slogan for the company has been making the rounds. When evil needs public relations, evil has Bursa and Marcel on speed dial. It should therefore come as no surprise that Pierce, as an image consultant, used his contacts in the media to ensure the unnamed journalist I mentioned earlier had his article wiped off the face of the internet. And precisely why we hear so little about what City have actually done, only throw away comments about 115 charges. This was part 3 of a 4 part deep dive we've been doing into Man City's crimes. Do let me know what you made of it down below, and I'll catch you in the next one folks. Peace.